Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're going to do a quick playthrough of a scenario from Forgotten Pacific Battles. Um, this is a magazine game recently released from Decision Games in uh, World at War magazine. The scenario, scenario we're going to do is the, the invasion of the island of Angar. Um, there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five different scenarios, five different islands you can invade in this game. Um, we can see another one here on the, the side. It's one map. Um, and it has all five of them in it, so it's actually really nice that you can kind of switch between them. But I wanted to show off the game a little bit, show off the system a little bit. This is not a full teaching playthrough or anything like that, um, but it'll be a full playthrough of this invasion. And I will describe, you know, how to play as I go, so you will learn how to play. It's just not a full invasion, um, full playthrough. So um, let's go ahead. Let's, uh, let's dive right in here. So I haven't even... I'm going to do start off with setup. Um, I have both the support marker... Um, cups for the American and the Japanese ready to go. Um, all I'm doing is I'm keeping aside the naval combat, um, naval support, so naval guns. And if you notice the difference between some of these, for instance, the naval one versus this mortar here, um, besides obviously the numerical value, the naval has a white stripe. The white stripe indicates that once it's used, um, it is kept out of the game. It does not come back versus something like a mortar is used and the next game turner goes back into the cup. So you can keep them in there, or you can put them separate for the initial bombardment. I'm going to keep the two naval ones for the Americans separate, um, so I can do a nice solid bombardment when I do start. All right, go ahead, and you're going to pick the landing spots. I'm going to go ahead and just do um, the beach red and beach blue, blue beach, red beach, um, the, which are the traditional landing sites for the American forces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, start off, pick the hex, landing beach. And we'll start off with the landing beach. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the, you can see our units here. The Americans are going to have um, these different, uh, the regiments, no, battalions, excuse me, the different battalions of the um, this little green and dog guy, which, I'm sorry, let me look it up quick, is the, hopefully you can see that, Whoop, sorry guys, um, 81st Infantry Division right here, so. I'm sorry. At the camera, like, super close, since it is just a small um, part of 81st Infantry Division, you can see right there. They were the traditionally what invaded Angar. So, anyway, um, I have the camera all zoomed in so that way you guys can see, since it is the map, this um, island is just this part of the map here. So, all right. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll assign um, the first American, um, 322nd, or excuse me, 321st, to this landing beach. And then we'll assign the... First American Battalion 322nd up here, and now we're gonna go ahead and roll for the Japanese deployment. Um, I like to do it this way. I'm pretty sure the rules say to do this way. I like to do it this way as well. That way you can make sure to have this is a surprise um, because as the American invaders, you don't know exactly where the Japanese are. You may have an idea, but you don't know exactly. And this way, you really don't know. So what I do is in the back of the rule book, um, and it has it in the game. Um, it has the rules are really nice. All, everything's covered. Um, the basic fire and movement rules system, uh, which I guess I should have said at the beginning. It does use the fire and movement system, which I really like. Super simple, um, but adds some good chrome in it. But then it has the Forgotten Pacific Battles exclusive rules here as well. Um, and fortunately, for the different island scenarios, it does have a random deployment for the Japanese units. So, for this first uh, 018, I'll go ahead and roll the 1d6. 4, which is 018. 4 is hex 1905. Which is right up here. And we'll go ahead and I'm just going to continue and do the rest of them here. So 028, so 4, 1507, so right here. Oh, so that is going to be, um, he's going to contest my landing here. So we're definitely going to want to try to bombard that hex for sure. So what we'll do is because um, there's a Japanese unit in the same hex that our landing craft is. Instead of being on landing beach, it's going to be on assault boat because, well, they're resisting. They're, uh, you know, trying to stop us. So we have to assault. And we'll have our guy next to it. Technically, this assault boat is considered in the same hex as that Japanese unit because that is the coastal hex right there. Um, and then our American unit will be adjacent because we're not technically on the beach yet. We're going to be assaulting it. All right. Roll for a 138. Is a 1, which is 1807. So this will be contested as well. 
Um, so both landings are going to be assault landings, amphibious assault landings. So definitely going to be trying to um, um, bombarding them um, with our naval units. All right, and then the last unit, which is the strongest Japanese unit, 348, is a 1, which is 1305, which is right down here. Okay. All right. Everyone's assigned, setup is done. Go ahead and jump into it. Um, this will be, this scenario is four turns. We have four turns, and our um, objectives is the Americans. I just want to get onto the island, and then we want to capture every air. Um, airship hex, which one, two, three, four, five airship hexes, which basically means we need to have, you know, have an American unit and be the last unit in each of these five hexes. We also need to catch, ca uh, excuse me, capture Saipan Village and the phosphate plant here. So all five of these hexes, Saipan Village hex and the phosphate plant hex. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the game here. First phase, phase is the amphibious operations, um, which that's what that is, and. You know, possibly you were supposed to do the, salt, the setup first with the Japanese. I prefer to do it um, first with the Americans because, like I said, I think that it's kind of a better assumption to say the Americans don't know where. Um, put that down a little bit. Um, don't know where the Japanese are. So, if you guys can see everything, okay, cool. All right, um, let's go ahead and dive in here. So, um, the next phase will be the movement phase. And amphibious operations phase is set up is only on the first turn, first game turn. So now do the movement phase. Um, because we are being, you know, blocked at the beachhead here, right? We're having to do assaults. That'll be take place in the combat phase. We can't do any movement. Um, my last game of this, the Japanese actually randomly set up farther back, kind of in the perimeter of the island. So I was able to move American forces on the island immediately. All right. We'll do bombardment phases next. And we are definitely going to do a bombardment. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a um, naval guns to each one of the assault hexes and then i'm also going to draw randomly so you can do up to two markers and you, you do draw randomly again other than the naval ones you can pick at the beginning um i'm gonna do random for each one so it looks like we got some mortars and then some more mortars here so 10 plus 3 is 13 and 13 here as well now you go ahead and it's just like you would for regular combat, um, which in this um, this system, the fire movement system, it's not odds based, it's differential, combat differential. So what you do is you look at 10 plus three here, so our attack is 13, minus the defense is three, because as most games, attack, defense, movement. Um, so minus three, so that's a total of plus 10. It would be 10, so that's plus 10. That's the combat differential. So we, know, we wanna know what terrain he's at, which he is on clear terrain. That's what we're salting is clear terrain. So we have a plus 10 combat, combat differential on clear train. So we go ahead and look on our uh, fancy little sheet here. So you can see our combat differential and the terrain type. So we go ahead and find our terrain, which is clear, all the way over to the combat differential of plus 10. And then this is what we'll roll on. We roll a 1d6. So you can see the results right here. So let's go ahead and roll a four. Let's go ahead and look over here. A four is defender three. Um, which means he will retreat three hexes. Let's move these guys off here. And again, we're not going to use that one again, so I'm going to go ahead and set it to the side. Um, the mortar one I'm going to put over here, though, because we're going to put that back in the cup with the next game turn. All right, so he does have to retreat three. So he's going to go ahead and retreat. Let's see. The rules. Let me check. double check the rules for retreat. Um, these are our, so are the solitaire rules, um, which I made, it's in the book, but I made up my own little cheat sheet. Um, okay, um, I don't see anything with retreat. I do know that ultimately they want to either take out my landing spots or they go to the airport, airstrip hexes here. So I'm going to go ahead and say he's going to retreat towards the airstrip because that would probably be his goal. So one... What did I get again? Was it D2 or D3? The four was D3, so three hexes. So one, two, three. So he's going to retreat here. Okay. And the nice thing is I've cleared the Japanese unit, so I can switch over to a landing beach, and then I have successfully landed this American unit um, thanks to the bombardment. 
All right, now we'll go ahead and do the other bombardment right down here. It's, again, it's 10 plus 3, 13. He has a 2. That's a plus 11. It only goes up to plus 10, though. And he is in a clear hex, just like the other one. So plus 10 in clear. Let's go ahead and roll. All right, a 5, which a 5 is D2. So defender retreats 2. So he's going to go ahead and push back, be pushed back. 1, 2. All right. So now I go ahead and actually wait a second. Wait a second. You know what? I don't. I think he's going to stand strong because I think. Hang on a second. If you look at the rules for retreating, yep, for combat, a Japanese unit forcibly retreated by a combat result will instead automatically conduct stiff resistance if it's retreat, cause it to become depleted or eliminated, or if it is presently occupied in airstrip hacks. That's right. That's right. So this is an airstrip hacks. He's already in airstrip hacks. So what he's going to do is what's called stiff resistance. Stiff resistance allows a unit to become depleted instead of suffering retreat, but then it doesn't move. So yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have to retreat, but he does get depleted, um, which means my American unit does not successfully land yet. He basically stays where he is. Um, so far, anyway, it's an unsuccessful assault, although he hasn't actually technically attacked yet. And that was our naval, so we'll discard that bad boy. Our mortar will put over here. All right, um, that was a bombardment phase. Let's go to the combat phase. Um, up here, obviously, there's no one for us to attack. There's a Japanese unit up here, but he can't, can't reach him. It's only Jason. Um, down here, we are going to do our assault. Um, he's going to continue assaulting this hex to try to get, um, try to land, basically. So, same deal as before. Um, use our support markers. We can do, Japanese always select, or excuse me, always draw two. So, you can always draw for the Japanese and just say, okay, maximum of two. Oh, no. Oh, this is not good for us. All right. So, they got both their um, kamikaze ones. Now, yes, as you can see, the white strips, so they will be removed from the game after this, but they're also some of the strongest ones. So, total of 8, 8, 16, plus the 1 defense, total of plus 17. Uh, not good. Or 17 defense, I should say. We have a 5 attack. Let's go ahead and start drawing for us. 5. So some artillery. 6, so 11. And so we get the aircraft. I don't think it's going to be good for us. Oh, no. Okay, just a little bazooka guy. So, 8 plus 5, so 13, versus what What were they? 17, so negative 4. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so negative 4, um, it's not good, and it's a clear hex. So, clear, negative 4 is right here. That's going to be bad for us. It's completely bad for us. All right, go ahead and roll. Um, 5, negative 4 of 5 is A in parentheses. Which is deplete one unit or eliminate one depleted one step unit. Critical bombardment, blah, blah, blah. Um, if it's been bombardment, be adjacent unit. So we do get depleted, unfortunately. We're not like completely eliminated. However, basically, what it is that we're pinned on the beach. So. And then these are removed from the game because they're the white stripe ones. All right, and that's it for the combat, um, combat phase for the Americans. Now there would be the mobile movement phase, but there are no mobile. Units, these are all leg units, you know, just infantry. Uh, mobile combat phase, again, only infantry. Now we go to the second player turn. So now it's a Japanese turn. Um, the Japanese are going to do, they have a couple goals. Again, it's guided, guided by the um, solitaire rules here that I've written out. Um, they are going to either try to take over the, if I had those, those B-Texas like I have right up here, if there was no American units, they would move to try to take that over because if they go on that, it'll, it gets eliminated. Or they try to go to the airstrip um, to try to hold that. So, they also avoid Amer American um, zones of control, clearly. So, what we do is, we're going to say a simple matter of, obviously, these two are, are both in good spots. They're not going to move anywhere. They're already on airstrips. This uh, Japanese unit down here, he's going to spend one movement point, which he has eight, so he's plenty. Move here, and he's going to stand strong there. Um, this Japanese unit, the sniper unit up here, he's going to come down off the mountain here. And he's going to try to make his way over here. So, and he's going to try to avoid the American zone of control. So it's be a little tougher, but I think he can do it. Let's see. One. He's going to follow the roads here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And then enters a clear, which is only one. So seven. And then eight. So... Although this was this is technically one, isn't it? So yeah, he's just gonna stand strong here. So Japanese have basically 
turtled up over the airstrip hex is saying, hey, come and get us. And now that they move there, according to the rules, they're basically going to stay there uh, and not move from there. So I'm going to have to dislodge them. Um, hopefully I'm able to do that next turn. So so let's see. That was the movement phase for the Japanese. No, bombardment phase, they actually skip it. Um, the Japanese player, when you're playing solitaire, does not do bombardment phase. Um, combat phase. Now they would do con they would conduct combat if they had double the attack of an American defender, which the only American defender that's adjacent is my guy right here, and he has a six versus the one, or excuse me, the zero. I guess zero attack because he's been depleted, so they're not gonna not gonna attack at all. So they're 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 content to just stand strong here. All right, and that's is the end of Japanese turn. So we go on to the American turn, second turn, and it's the American turn. Um. All right, and we'll go ahead and put the markers back, shake them up a little bit. All right, onto the um, movement phase is the first phase. Um, again, we're right here. We're trying to get on here. We can't. The American's up here. He's going to go ahead and start moving down the beach because he's going to try to, first of all, he has to get off, off the beach so he can land more American units, but also he wants to engage in combat with the Japanese. Um, because normally when you enter a zone of control, you would be stopped. However, if you can see the little black little hex hexagon shape on these two Japanese units compared to these do not have it. That means this unit does not exert a zone of control, um, which is the sniper unit, so I guess it makes sense. So he's going to go ahead and just continue on. He's going to enter this hex, which was one, two movement points, and then he will be stopped by this zone of control. Plus, there's nowhere else really to go anyway. So he's stopped right here. And now, like I said, he's not going to move. And at the end of the movement phase, you can land an American unit. So I'm going to go ahead and land the, um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and land this. They're all the same, I guess, technically here, these American units. So I'm going to land the uh, 2nd Battalion of the 322nd American Infantry right here. Boom. Now you land him, and then he can't move. He stays there till next turn. All right. Movement phase is done. Bombardment phase. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do some bombardments here. So we're gonna try to do we're gonna try to bombard the beach hex here, which is a little dangerous, but we're gonna do what we can. Um, so two support markers, three and two. So just a mortar and a bazooka, not great. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do also bombard let's bombard down here this unit. Um, Artillery and tanks. So that's not too bad. So plus ten. So all right. So and that's all we're gonna do from our, we're gonna save the rest of our uh, ones for combat. So all right. Um, three plus two is five. He has a one defense, so it's plus four in clear. Let's go ahead and roll. So five. Let's see, clear plus four five. Exchange, which when you're doing a bombardment, exchange is no effect basically. All right, and then down here, we're at 10. He's a four, it's so only a plus six, and he's in, in clear, yeah, he is in clear. I think they're all in clear now. So, plus six, hold a four, clear, plus six, a four, is D2. So he will retreat two hexes. Um, now, remember, so it says retreat two, right, D2, but, we go back to the solitaire rules. Japanese unit forcibly treated by combat result will instead automatically conduct stiff resistance, which is retreated because it to become depleted or eliminated, or is presently occupying an airstrip hex. So because he is on an airstrip right now, um, this Japanese unit is going to go ahead and just do stiff resistance, which means we flip him over, he's now depleted. So, all right, and that's it for bombardment phase. We're going to go on to the combat phase. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... So I'm going to assist. So this American unit here, the... Uh, First battalion of the 322nd is going to assist the um, first battalion of the 321st on this landing here. So standard combat, just like we've talked about a hundred times. Go ahead and draw a couple support markers for the U.S. Mortars and aircraft. There we go. There we go. And then for the Japanese, if they get there too. Oops, it's going to be a bunker. And another bunker, double bunkers. Uh oh, not good for us. All right, so we are at 9, 10, 11, 12, plus 5 and 5, um, so 22, plus there, 7, 7, 14, so it's 15, so 5, 6, 7. So a total of plus 7. So plus 7 on a clear hex. Go ahead and roll it. Here's a 3. 
So clear hex plus seven, a three is D2. Um, now there's nowhere for him to retreat as well as um, because he's on a control plus the whole, you know, forcibly whatever he would do stiff resistance. So he's eliminated, but there's nowhere for him to retreat because he'd still be in his own control. And they, uh, the Japanese units can't stack. American units can stack two to a hex. Japanese units cannot stack. Uh, just one unit. So, eliminated. All right, so one uh, Japanese unit is eliminated. Now, what we can do is we're going to go ahead and flip our salt boat over to landing beach. And we're going to go ahead and put the American unit, depleted even though he is, right on that hex. Unfortunately, he's stuck there. There's nowhere for him to go. But, hey, at least he's there. Um, hopefully, going to hold that till the next turn. So, get the support markers out of the way. All right. Now that is it for the combat. No one else can engage in any combat. Um, American phase here. So we'll go ahead and go over to the Japanese turn. Um, so it's now it's turn two, and now it's the Japanese turns, or phases, I should say. Um, movement, they're going to stand strong because they're all on airstrip hexes. Um, bombardment, they don't do. Attack, yeah, see, the only one they'd be, you can think about maybe here, but it's they only have a one and a, well, zero. So they're not going to attack at all. So... Basically, the, American, the Japanese turn has just gone by. So, we go to turn three, Americans. Um, do our movement. Let's go ahead and bring down this American unit here. Uh, the second battalion, 322nd, down to, let's see, that's one. Remember, there's no zone of control here. So, one, two, We'll stop there, too. Okay, yeah, we'll stop right there. Um, he's going to stay where he is. He's going to stay where he is. He's going to do... Actually, no, he's not going to stay there, is he? He's going to move, for sure. So he's going to go ahead and move down here. And then, that way, we can go ahead and land. Um, we'll go ahead and land the uh, 2nd Battalion of the 321st right here. Perfect. All right, and we'll go ahead and land the 3rd Battalion of the 322nd up here. And that's the end of the movement phase. Bombardment phase. Um, you know what? He's weakened. Let's go ahead. Oh, I gotta put all these back in. My bad. All right. So he's weakened already. So we want to go ahead and do some damage on him. So let's go ahead and bombard him. Do a couple here. So mortar and artillery. So not bad. Um, and then we'll do. Let's go ahead and I just want to overdo it because I don't want to. We do have to hurry up though in our game here. So, just for because we only have this turn and then the next turn. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, oh, uh, bombard the sniper up here as well. So, it's a tank and a mortar. That's not bad. All right, let's go ahead and do the sniper up here. So, four, five, six, seven versus minus one. So, a total of plus six on the clear hex, the clear terrain. So, five. I think that's six. So plus six and we roll a five. Exchange. No good. No good. Nothing happens. No effect. Um, then down here, six, seven, eight, nine, minus three. So plus six on clear. Gotta roll low. Oh no. Plus six clear. Exchange. No effect. That was a waste of two a waste of four support markers. That's alright though. Um let's go ahead and do our com excuse me, we're going to combat phase. Um not going to attack him because I don't feel comfortable with that. But let's go ahead and do... So let's do this this American unit and that one. So the, the 2nd 321st and the 2nd 322nd battalions will attack this Japanese unit. And then here we're going to have the 1st 322nd attack that Japanese unit. Yeah, let's do that. So for that first combat here, um, draw. So 6, 7, 8. So our two markers for them. And then Japanese will draw for there too. Oh, no. All right, well, bad for us. All right, so we had six, seven, eight support markers, um, plus our five and five, so a total of 18. They were at 14, 15, 17, 17, so plus one on clear terrain. Yikes. All right, so we'll roll for clear terrain, plus one, a three. So clear terrain plus one, a three is exchange. So go ahead and do, you know, flip him over. And then we'll go ahead and 
this uh, American unit over as well. There we go. So exchange exchange combat result. Not too bad. Not the end of the world anyway. All right. Now let's go ahead and do combat up here. Now I'm with the first to that sniper unit. So Americans, we go ahead and do our two mortar and flamethrower. So total seven plus seven. So five plus seven. So we get twelve. Um, they're at one plus. Machine gun and double machine guns. One in each hand, I guess. Um, eight, nine. So, where are we at? Mm -hmm. Five. Twelve. There are nine. Plus three. Plus three on clear. Not very good. Not very good. Alright, three. Plus three on clear. We rolled a three. Which puts us at exchange. Oh. Uh, so then... But I, although I believe that may eliminate them. They are, yes! Alright, so they were eliminated. Um, but we do have to suffer a loss. That's okay. Let me pick that loss right there. Alright. Alright, so that's the end of our American combat phase. Um, the other phases are skipped. Again, no mobile units. Um, so we go to the Japanese part of turn three. Um... They will not move, and for attacking, nope, see no bonuses, nothing good here, not, not high enough I should say. So yeah, they're going to stand strong, um, not going to attack or anything like that. So, we go on to the final turn of the game, fourth turn. This is the Americans' fourth turn, last chance, they have four turns to win the game, so we'll see if we can do it here. Alright, let's put these uh, support markers back. Alright, shake them all up a little bit. Alright guys, this is it. Fourth turn. All right. So what we need to do. All right. So it's a movement phase. Let's see if I, I bet I can get. I think I know what I can do here. So this should do it. I think this may do it. We'll see. All right. So we're going to go ahead. And this American unit is going to go ahead and move. One, two, three, four. He's in the phosphate plant. So we've taken control of that. Five. Saipan Village is ours. Six, seven. Okay. So that was all the movement, well, not all the movement points, but he does enter his own control here. So anyway, he stopped. Um, although, so now we have control of the phosphate plant and Saipan village. So all we need to do is control these last um, hexes here. So what we'll do is we will move this American unit. He's in his own control, but he can move one hex. If he stays in his own control, he can move one hex. Um, but then he uses up all of his movement points, so we'll move right here, and then he stops. And we'll go ahead and land our last unit, the 3rd Battalion of the 322nd, on this landing beach right here. Um, and then... I think I can do... The Americans can stack two, so what I'll do is go ahead and... Go ahead and move this American Battalion here, the 1st the Battalion, 322nd, right here. All right, and now we are going to do what we can here. Um, basically, I feel pretty confident we can take the, take them out. So um, it's just going to be, we're going to have these, once it gets to the combat phase, we're going to have these three attack him and these two attack him. So um, we control both these spots, Phosphate Plan and the Saipan Village. We obviously control this airship hex, this one, this one, and then this other one. That one's not one, but these two, which have the Japanese units. So we can eliminate them, we can advance in after combat into them, and then we will control the hexes, and we will win at the last second, basically. So, all right, let's see what we can do. Um, onto the bombardment phase. Should we bombard? Yeah, we better bombard, right, guys? We gotta. It's not, you can suffer uh, losses in attack, Jason attacker, but it's still worth it to bombard. So, start at the bottom there, the Japanese in the bottom. Um, shooting some bazookas and tank rounds at them. And then the top one will be... Dropping bombs and artillery. That's a good one right there. That's a good one right there. All right. Um, although, uh-oh. I don't think I should bombard. Is it too late? Am I going to cheat if I don't bombard? Because here's my, th here's my problem, guys. If I bombard and eliminate them, then I don't get to advance after combat. And so, I would lose. So what we're going to do is we're not going to bombard. Um... Because that would, like I said, if I eliminated them, 
don't get to advance because I don't have any more movement phases left. So we've got, we have to do advance after combat. So basically we're going to skip bombardment phase, no bombarding. Um, and shh, don't tell anybody that I cheated and, you know, give it back. Um, shh. Uh, we're going to go to the combat phase. All right, let's do it. Now we're going to do it. This is it. This is real combat. So the, the second battalion, first battalion, third battalion, or Americans are all going to attack that Japanese unit. And this first battalion, third battalion are going to attack this Japanese unit right here. All right, guys, let's do it. So for the top fight, we got aircraft and tank support. And the Japanese will have be supported by a bunch of machine guns set up on the airstrip. And then the bottom combat, we have, are supported by mortars and artillery. And the Japanese, oops, the right one here, are supported by, what they got? A bunker and then the last bunker, right? There we go. All right, let's see what we can do, boys. All right, so let's do the top one first. So I feel good about that one. So 555 five, five is 15. Um, it was 13, so 28, versus their 10. So one of the maxes out of plus 10. So plus 10 on a clear hex. Let's roll it. There's a 1. DE, defender eliminated. So he is eliminated. And we'll go ahead and advance after combat. Advance into that hex here. Um, and now this fight right here. So 5, 5, 10, plus 9. So 19 versus 14, 15, 16, 17. So plus 2 on clear. So plus two on clear. So if we look at clear terrain, plus two, um, we see the different defender, basically, defender retreat, exchange, or no effect. If we roll a one through five, we will win the scenario. If we roll a six, we will lose the scenario. Let's see what we get. One through five, a win. A six, we lose. Four, we win. So four, exchange. Obviously, he is eliminated. It was, he's already reduced, so he's eliminated. Um, we'll exchange with this guy. And now that he's been eliminated, we'll go ahead and advance after combat. Capture the last airstrip hex and the last possible turn on the last phase. Um, and we win the game. That is Forgotten Pacific Battles, Invasion, Battle of Angar. Um, using these solitaire rules. So, a quick little mini review. Uh, I really like this system, and I really like this game. Um, the system is super simple. Um, I've heard some negative thoughts about the fact that the system is so simple, but in my mind, um, they, don't, they don't make any illusions. They're not saying this is some complicated um, system. And I'm talking about the, the fire and movement system, by the way, um, where you have you know onboard artillery and you have all these different you know supply other factors. I heard someone say that they couldn't believe the supply wasn't a part of the game. Um, I'll be honest. Sometimes you just want to play a quick game that gives you the feel of an invasion. You saw those pieces already, right? You saw me having to conduct landings. You saw me trying to maneuver around. You saw me, you know, first it looked like I wasn't necessarily going to get enough units on board. Thankfully, by the end, I got all my American units on the board. Um, and they were able to help out at the end. But that, that was not a sure thing. And I've had games where they've gotten, have gotten penned up at the landing beaches. Now, I don't necessarily want to worry about supply, especially since we're talking about battles that, in reality, most of these were fairly short. Um, I'm talking about these, some of these invasions are talking talk, happened all, where the battles were completed within the same day, effectively. Um, so, in that, in that aspect, I'm not worried about supply. I'm not worried about some of the intricacies of the rules. Um, I just want to see kind of what we got here. And I think it does a great job of simulating but in a very playable manner, right? That also, I think the solitaire rules for this game work really well. The reason is, although they are simple solitaire rules, and it's very much like, hey, do this, do this. If you can't do this, do something else. Not complicated, right? And you say, well, that's not a full solitaire engine. Well, it's good enough for this game, because what you're talking about is you're talking about invading American forces um, and very static Japanese defenders. So there's no reason for... Um, a Jap I, would, I would feel bad playing this two-player and having a Japanese defender um, sitting there, you know, not knowing, you know, basically not being able to do very little, right? Because you're not, you don't have as many units as the Americans, units aren't as strong, and the Americans, it's set up so that the Americans have that advantage. But what I like is that the way the victory conditions are, the Americans struggle to get them done. Because you have to, 
you have to get everything done very quickly. Um, as the Americans, you know, you have four, say this one, you had four turns to do it. You saw, that took me until the very last turn, the very last phase for me to even have a chance to win. Um, and I was able to just eke out a victory. So anyway, I really enjoy it. Um, I hope you guys liked the video. Um, hopefully it gave you a good idea how the system works. Um, I think it works very well, very quick playing. As you saw, we were able to finish this. The video is going to go about 40 minutes, but the actual battle itself was probably, what, half an hour? And that was me talking and describing things, which I can, I can play this Invasion of Angar. It's only a handful of counters, but still, I can play this in 15, 20 minutes, especially once I'm a little familiar with the rules, which don't take that long to become familiar with. Um, I like how the support, you know, artillery, airstrikes are abstracted with the support markers. Again, um, you know, it is simplified. Sure, it's not so that you don't get to have that aspect of playing with little aircraft or playing with artillery or positioning artillery. This isn't a game for that. This isn't a system for that. But if you want something that is going to simulate these battles um, with a reasonable amount of chrome, where you're going to be able to have fun and you're just going to knock out a battle in no time at all, definitely recommend checking out uh, Forgotten Pacific Battles. So, again, I hope you guys like to watch this video. Um, Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, anything you want to comment on, add questions, anything like that, um, feel free. And then check out my other videos as well. All right, thanks, guys. Later.